there, Otaku Ken Chan, back with another episode of Go Mega Otaku Gamer Alpha. And uh, today we're going to have a look at not just one system, well, sort of just one system, but actually a family of systems, a small collection of systems. Uh, and uh, they're actually sort of computers, sort of. Um, I'm talking about Atari. And today we're going to have a look at the Atari XE. Or actually, we're going to take a look at these three XEs. And by three, I mean the 65 XE, the 130 XE, and the XE GS, otherwise known as the XE Game System. Yeah, baby. Okay, so let's set the way, way back machine for 1986 when uh, Atari, under Jack Tramiel, decided to re-release the Atari 7800 and the Atari 2600 Junior. Okay, uh, the 7800, of course, had been, uh, had a brief test run in 1984. Um, and this was followed by uh, the XEGS, uh, the, the game system. Um, it was uh, basically a repackaged Atari 65XE. Um, and that's not something they hadn't done before. The Atari 5200, for example, was just basically a repackaged 400 or 800 computer. Okay, so, uh, and of course then later on came the 130XE as they started to move away from the console market more into the computer market. They expanded the memory again and they made the 130XE. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at these devices, and we're going to show you the, the games. Now, like a lot of things Atari, this gets a little confusing. Uh, the, the XE uh, line had, uh, of course, played all the 8-bit uh, computer games that were available on things like the 400 and the 800. But then they also had their own XE line of games, and we're going to sort of kind of learn how to tell the difference between them sort of yeah we'll take it's like that we'll take a look at it um, let's take a look at the systems though okay here we have the XE game system and I have this plugged in right now to here it uh, I don't have it turned on yet you have a power button here you have a start button uh, select option and reset and these are shiny candy-like buttons um, on this sexy XE. Um, and, of course, the Atari logo right there. And this keyboard, I want to give a shout-out to Matt from Floating Fish Studios for helping me get this keyboard. This keyboard, uh, the keyboard arrangement on this is kind of cool. Um, you see it detaches here. Um, it doesn't really firmly attach. It has this short cable to plug it in. It's not like you're going to, like drag this off onto your lap or anything like that unless the you know you're sitting really close to the TV but it does this 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 hooks up underneath here it's firm as you can see I'm lifting the entire thing by the keyboard because it, it hooks in there and it, it's it's a firm lock it locks into place you can't get it out you have to like tilt it back like so and then to release it but it, it you know it, it locks in place sort of um, full QWERTY keyboard. Uh, you have a help button here, which isn't much help, but for pause, on just like all Atari devices from this era, the pause button for the game was the space bar. Um, and if you pull this off of here one more time, and we take a look around the sides here, we uh, discover that we have two controller ports that are kind of on an angle. Charlie okay and I'm not sure what the design idea was there if you go over to this side again to plug the keyboard in it's at an angle the cartridge bay is e sidewise it's at an angle again which is kind of strange cute it's what makes this a sexy XE Okay, so, and then we go in the back here. Here's a parallel port, uh, parallel, uh, yeah, port for, like, printing. Here is your power. And then here we have, this is, this is interesting. Here we have a standard 
like RF out right here channel selector you know channel uh, what is it here channel high or low you know three or four whatever two or three whatever but then we have a sound out and a video out they don't have these color coordinated they're not what you know uh, the, the AV that we have come to know and love you know by you know whatever 1990 uh, this is just some kind of you know simple outs here that actually end up being a yellow video out and a white sound out and and you can't really tell that by looking at it you kinda gotta fart around with it to get the idea um, and this differentiates here's a, a joystick um, I got two of these when I got the I got I picked up the uh, actually the uh, 65 XE just yesterday which is what made me decide to throw all my XE's on the table and just go crazy Okay, and getting on to the 65 XE, we'll start. We'll start uh, looking at, at each of these and giving a little bit of background. The 65 XE was actually supposed to be the 900 XLF, but they changed it, and it's got 64K of RAM. Okay, now the XE game system is basically the same kind of girth and beef as the 65 XE you know also 64 K of RAM um, and it's just as I said a repackaged 65 XE um, then we went on to the 130 XE and the 130 XE is 128 K of RAM okay and like you know I know these numbers really don't mean much. Um, and let's go ahead and we'll, we'll, we'll look at these two machines. And, and the first thing you're going to notice is that they're exactly the same design, uh, at least on, on the surface. They're the same size. Okay, if I do this, they're the same size. Um, they're almost exactly, in fact, they are exactly the same size. They, they could have made these out of... You know, the same mold, same size. Um, and then, of course, if you look on the sides and the tops and all, all of that of these, um, if you look on the side here, you'll notice that they have two controller ports here um, for controllers. If you roll the suckers over here, um, the only difference that you see here on the back is the 130XE has this expansion thing that the 65 does not have. These are the cartridge bays here. The, um, there's no play to these. You just push the cartridge right up against this and it fits into it and there you go. Um, here's your, your printer or your parallel ports right here on, on both of these. Um, and then of course when you come to you have a monitor out, a proprietary monitor out, uh, channel 2 and 3 right here um, and then here we have a power for both, and then power switch for both of these right here. Um, and then on the other side there's nothing. Um, and this, it's the same design for both. The only difference is the 65XE says 65XE on the surface there, and this says 130XE. On the inside is what matters. This has twice as much memory. Both of them have help, start, select, option, and reset buttons like this. And this design was something that went on to other computers of theirs later on. Uh, this general kind of design went into, if you ever saw the Atari 1040 ST or the ST computers, um, any of the ST, the 520 and the 1040 ST computers, basically the same design. So that's these three units here in a nutshell um, again this is like the 65 XE guts wise this is a 65 XE this is a game system um, all of them play though basically the same games um, they all play the 400 or 800 computer you know the games that you would find on this or on this uh, also play on these but then they also have their own XE games 
and let's take a look at some of those, and then we'll look at what they see. Uh, look, uh, look at what, uh, see what they look like on the screen there. Now here's where it gets a little confusing. Okay, some things you should know. This game system will connect to the disk drive. I have a 1050 disk drive that I have currently connected to this 130XE that can change. I had that previously connected to my 800XL computer. I did an episode about it. It was confusing. Okay, um, but um, these all have built-in basic. So this isn't needed for any of these. You don't need that. Here's a, a little minor 2049er here. And this says for the Atari 400, 800, and 1200 computers. But the, these will work. This will work with these XEs, the sexy XEs. Um, music composer, what the hell? Um, assembler editor, who uses this stuff? Um, and of course, there's Ms. Pac Man. This is. You know, a game for the uh, standard Atari computers, the 8-bit line. Now, the XE games, uh, this is actually for 8-bit computers, but the XE games say XE on them. Here's Hardball. XE. Video game cartridge. Here is, what is this? Crossbow. And this is a light gun game. And light gun games only work well on televisions that are, you know, your standard definition televisions. You can't use them on an HD TV, as I've expressed before. So, you know, we have this as well. Uh, so, when you're, if you're looking for games for uh, any of these, uh, these are actually kind of cool because they are backward compatible. Um, just about any 8-bit Atari game for any of their 8-bit computers, not the 2600, folks, not the 5200, certainly not the 5200. Those cartridges are huge. And certainly not the 7800. But any of the 8-bit home computers by Atari, uh, any, any of those games will work in these systems. So let's take a look now. Now that we've seen the cartridges and the differences... We're going to go ahead and we're going to look at some of the games on the screen. How about a little Robotron 2084? Nice, crisp, clear, polished graphics. Ooh. Yes, I'm doing quite well. I got the chick anyway. Ooh. That's a little Robotron for you. Okay, here's... Yep, you guessed it. Star Raiders! Kinds of things that... Uh, Star Wars made popular. Actually, Star Trek also with this perspective that we all love so much. This first person... Is it first person or first ship? I never understood the point of this. There were easier knockoffs than this. Oh, I took a hit. Garbage scow, Captain. How dare you! Try that again. <laughs> yes, yeah, Star Raiders, I got raided. Give me Tomb Raider over Star Raider any day. Here's one of my favorite kicks. Hey, I 
hit the button for that, you screwball. Nonsense, you fool! Yes, come on. This draws us in so slowly. But anyway, I think I ate up enough of that board. Yep, we're on to another board. A little kicks. Okay, it's time for Dig Dug. Chumley, you come on up here to the top. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> I dig that. Hey, come here. some idea, you know, you go up and you pump, make these things eat at air hose, and then you pump them up till they explode. I mean... Yeah, dig dug. Here's a little something using the Atari light gun. The light gun. The XE system light gun. Yeah, let's see this game. This game is called Crossbow. Not to be confused with Link's crossbow training on the Wii. Yes. But I'm going to lay here and shoot some crap with this light gun. And you shoot the little dudes in the, in the windows and the dudes that appear on the street, and the ghosts. Because, you know, when you shoot ghosts, they die. It's just like an arcade shooter. It's not calibrated all that well. <laughs> but, you know, you gotta protect the, the people that are walking. Not bad. Not whoops, 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 not a bad little number. And this is an XE specific game. This wasn't made for the 400 or 800. This is an XE game here. All right, so she got across there, and you got these different paths to pick. We'll try the green path now. Oh look, it's a bridge. There's a gator. That's what we like to see, pterodactyls. This game must have been designed by somebody who was into intelligent design because they're showing cavemen here with, or any kind of man here with, dinosaurs, but that's Crossbow Light Gun Game for the XE. At the end of the day, the Atari computer line was more popular really in Europe than it was really here, and uh, 
it had some tough competition from Amiga. You know, the Commodore people in Europe. Um, Amiga ended up being kind of the favored computer uh, system for people that were into graphics and things like that. The Atari, the Atari systems were more favored by people who were into music and sound. Um, of course, these weren't. These, these older computers really didn't stack up, which is why they kept replacing them every so often. Uh, uh, the XE game system, of course, was the last game system that Atari made before they came out with the Jaguar. Um, and, of course, we all know how well that did. None of these did well. Um, however, I would uh, you, you're probably thinking, oh, hardcore collector only then? No, no. Um, if you can find these, uh, the fact of the matter is there's tons of games for these systems. If you can find, uh, you know, a 130XE or a 65 or any of the any of the Atari computers, really, any of the 8-bit line, um, there's a ton of games for them. Um, and these games are good games. They're from the classic era. You know, they're from the 80s. Um, for those of us who are old enough to remember arcades and stuff like that, and what that was like, I, I know a lot of people today weren't around for that. But uh, not a bad system. They're, they're not too expensive. Um, and they're uh, uncommon. They're not really super rare. It depends. You know, if you put them all together, all the XE systems together, and if you start including other Atari computers, you know, you, the chances of you running into one of these old Atari computers is actually pretty good if you know where to look. Um, if you go on eBay or Amazon, I'm sure you could find, especially on eBay, I'm sure you could find at least one or two old Atari computers pretty easily. Um, the game system thing, of course, I would say probably for a little bit more hardcore collectors, because that specific unit is a little bit more hard to find. But for cheap games, by the dozen... You know, and uh, performance. I mean, these systems they they have they have good performance. They do well. The graphics aren't that bad, even though Atari is synonymous with bad graphics because their biggest sellers, their biggest selling machine of all time, of course, for them, uh, as far as game systems was is, con is concerned, would would have been the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Everybody knows what that looked like. You know, it was the first. I mean, what do you want? Um, I recommend these systems, uh, at least any Atari 8-bit computer to any collector, um, because there are so many games, they're cheap, and they're easy to pick up and play, easy to do. So um, go out and get one if you can find one. Um, if you can't find one, look. Um, I'm sure you will be able to find one. These are the Atari XEs, the sexy XEs from Atari.